And this is part two of a video for class six on food. We already have seen uh, <clears throat> in part one food, where does it come from, what do animals eat. Now this is food part two for class six. And here incidentally you can see what we call a balanced diet. A balanced diet consisting of cereals or grains, fruits and vegetables, pulses and dairy products, fats and sugar. And cereals and grains we take or consume in larger quantity and fats and sugars in smaller quantities. So here we go with food part 2 for class 6. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned in part 1. We learned that food, whatever we take from environment in order to get energy and for growth and development and good health is food. Food is what we take from environment for energy, growth, development and good health. Meal, food taken at a particular time of the day. Lunch is a meal. Breakfast is a meal. Food taken at a particular time of the day. Dishes, each kind of prepared items within a meal. A meal may consist of <coughs> several items. For instance, your breakfast may have two or three items. Lunch may have four or five items. Each of the item would be a dish. Ingredients are what you are using to prepare. You may, you may be using rice, dal, vegetables, oil, spices. These are ingredients used to prepare each dish. So breakfast is a meal because it's a food taken at a particular time of the day in the morning. Upma and sambar are examples of dishes in breakfast. Your breakfast may consist of two dishes, upma and sambar. Suji, vegetable oil, salt and spices are examples of ingredients for upma, dal, vegetables, coconut oil, salt, spices and hing could be examples of ingredients for hot sambar. Now we hope it is hot. So suji, vegetables, oil, salt and different kinds of spices make this tasty upma and dal, vegetables, oil, salt and spices. These are the ingredients for a beautiful hot sambar. We include a variety of dishes made of different ingredients because they give us certain components necessary for energy, growth, health and well-being. Why do we eat uh, different kinds of food? Not always upma, not always chapati, not always rice, not always uh, carrot, not always beans. But we are eating a variety of dishes because they contain certain components which are essential for energy, growth, health and well-being. And each of these components we would call a nutrient. Each of the component is a nutrient. The chief nutrients or components are carbohydrates, proteins, fat, vitamins and minerals, water and dietary fibers or roughage. Carbohydrate, we call them energy food. They give us energy. Proteins we call body building food. Fat is also an energy food but it could be a reserve energy. 
Vitamins and minerals are protective food because they protect the body from certain diseases. Water is necessary to utilize and distribute the nutrients throughout the body. And dietary fibers are roughage. That's an accessory component. It does not give nourishment, but it is essential for good health. Carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. They provide energy for life activities. Run, speak, think, breathe, heartbeat, all the external activities and all the internal activities, they require energy and carbohydrates provide energy for activities. Food rich in carbohydrates, starchy grains, rice, wheat, for example, we have rice, bread or chapati. Other starchy food items, for example, potatoes. Sugars, various kinds of sugars, glucose. Then the sugar, which we eat, beet, honey. So these are food rich in carbohydrate. Rice, bread, chapati, sugar, potato, beet, glucose and honey. <clears throat> Next, proteins. Proteins contain nitrogen in addition to carbon hydrogen. Extra component nitrogen. There can be no protein without nitrogen, but it's not only nitrogen, it's also nitrogen plus carbon plus hydrogen. And often they also contain phosphorus and sulfur. They supply bodybuilding materials for growth and development. For growth and development, they provide the building materials for bodybuilding. Food rich in proteins, pulses, legumes, that is dal, for example, gram, pea or beans, animal products, milk, fish, meat and nuts like almond and walnuts. And see here that milk always the best and the safest food for all ages. So in order to be healthy, everyone needs to consume milk daily because there can be no substitute for milk. Fats and oils. Fats and oils also contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. They give us more energy per gram than carbohydrates. One gram of uh, fat would give you more energy than one gram of carbohydrate. And they are also stored as reserve energy giving food. Fat layer under your skin will keep your body warm. Food rich in fats, butter, oil seeds like coconut, groundnut, mustard and till from where we get oil, vanaspati ghee and animal fat. Vitamins and minerals are called micronutrients. Micro means small because they are required in very very small quantities. They are essential to protect us from diseases and for normal body functions. Vitamin A, necessary for eyesight and good skin, found in milk, butter, ghee, carrots, papaya and leafy vegetables and also fish oil. Vitamin D, necessary for strong bones, found in oil, butter, ghee or made by our body under sunlight. Vitamin D is the only vitamin which our body can make if it is sufficiently exposed to sunlight. Now many of the common items uh, belong to both vitamin A and D because both of them are fat soluble. Vitamin B. Now vitamin B includes a group of vitamins, not a single vitamin, but a group of vitamins and we call them vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B6, B vitamin B12 and so on. 
Collectively, they are called vitamin B complex. B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12, all these are together called vitamin B complex. Necessary for energy, healthy skin, healthy hair, proper working of nerves and making blood cells. And these are food rich in vitamin B. And remember, vitamin B and C are water soluble. Vitamins A, D, E and K are fat soluble. Vitamin C, essential for a body. Why? Because it will help you to fight infections and diseases. It will make your body strong and make it powerful enough to fight infections and diseases. So if you have a deficiency of vitamin C, it means your body is an easy prey to disease producing germs. Means you will catch infections very quickly. Vitamin D, vitamin C deficiency also makes our blood vessels fragile so that even the minor injury or minor pressure could make them bleed. Usually it is noticeable as bleeding gums while brushing teeth. It's called scurvy. Foods in which you will find vitamin C include oranges, guava and other fruits. And also milk, an essential source of vitamin C. Minerals. Now, various minerals are necessary. You also need, in addition to iron, iodine and calcium, we need sodium, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, copper. But these things are not in the syllabus. So we are just discussing three minerals. Iron for blood formation, iodine for thyroid gland function, and calcium for strong teeth and bones. Here you have calcium rich food, milk, fenugreek or methi, green leafy vegetables. So these are calcium rich. We have iodine rich food here. But mainly iodine can be obtained from seafood such as sea fish and also from iodized salt. And we have here iron rich food which includes also liver. And incidentally remember that milk is the only food which is poor in iron which does not contain iron. Milk is a total food. It contains almost all the things your body will require but not iron. Milk does not contain iron. Now dietary fibers also called roughage. The same thing you can call it dietary fibers. You can also call them roughage. These are fibers of plant origin. You will never get them from animal food or food coming from animal source. Not from fish or meat. Or egg, you will always get them from plant source. They do not provide nourishment, but they promote gut health. They provide the bulk for passage of food along the digestive tube. Roughage is found in fresh vegetables, fruits, whole grains. Banana is a very good item for fiber content and is recommended to relieve constipation. And here we have several food rich in roughage or dietary fiber. All of them are of plant origin. So we have here a list of vitamins or minerals, their deficiency, disease and symptom. Vitamin A causing loss of vision, sometimes called night blindness. Vitamin B, vitamin B1 actually we have uh, here, beriberi causing weak muscles. Vitamin C, scurvy, bleeding gums. Vitamin D, rickets, that is soft bones. Calcium, which is affects the bone and teeth. So we have weak bones and tooth decay. Iodine, deficiency causes goiter, that is a swelling of glands in the neck. And iron deficiency causes anemia. That is poor quality or poor quantity of blood 
causing weakness. So these are some of the deficiency disease associated with various vitamins and minerals. Now balanced diet, a natural variety of diet which satisfies the daily requirement of various nutrients is called a balanced diet. First of all, a balanced diet must be able to provide all the nutrients you need every day and it should be a natural food not vitamins and tonics. Never believe the so-called nutritionists advertising various health drinks or food supplements. Never believe the nutritionists who come on the TV and advertise health drinks. Consume natural food only. If you really need any food supplement, visit the hospital. The hospital will tell you what you lack, what are the deficiencies you have and what you have to take but never believe the advertisements you see on the TV about health drinks and food supplements. They do not provide any nutritional benefits. Actually, these are commercial and largely meant to cheat people. Obesity, consumption of excess food, excess food, overeating, you can call it, you can call it overeating especially junk food and lack of proper physical activities. You have no physical activity and you are overeating. This will give rise to unhealthy weight gain. You will gain weight but that would be unhealthy weight gain and that's called obesity. So obesity is unhealthy weight gain. Increase in weight which is not good for you and comes from overeating and lack of proper physical exercise or activity because obesity can cause various diseases. Now why do we cook food? One, to make it tastier. Two, to kill the germs. And three, to make it easier to digest. But wrong way of cooking or wrong way of preparing means loss of vitamins and nutrients. Removal of skin or outer covering when it is edible will remove some of the nutrients. For example, in polished rice, the vitamin B is removed. Excess cooking, heating tomato or apple would destroy vitamin C. Cooking with excess water and then draining it off, that also would be uh, equivalent to throwing away a uh, lot of nutrients you would be throwing away along with water. Excess repeated washing of grains and pulses could also result in loss of surface nutrient. So it is not only necessary to have balanced diet but also to know how to prepare these so as to preserve the nutrients. So that's all for food 2 for class 6. That was Easy Elite English Educational Trust we will be coming back with more interesting videos. Till then, thank you and goodbye.